the microphone back. Nelda and Charles both had their hand. You've said two or three times since we've been sitting here about dreams. And uh, I had an unusual dream last night, and I, I'm not going to go into it. It was actually kind of horrible. Uh, and <laughs> we were talking in the car, and someone else had a kind of a violent dream. And um, I guess when I woke up, I was kind of disturbed about it because I'm, you know, I've, uh, I feel like I've come to a point now um, where I'm past, you know, romantic relationships and, you know, that kind of thing in my life. And I feel good about that. <laughs> it's real peaceful. <laughs> but I had this dream, and I won't go into details, but it was a sexual dream, a violent sexual dream. And it was very disturbing when I woke up. So I'm, I'm thinking, and the other lady, she had a violent dream, something she would never do. <laughs> but uh, this one was particularly disturbing when I woke up this morning because yesterday you said dreams are uh, unexpressed wishes or I forgot how you put it wish fulfillment yeah wish fulfillment so I'm, I'm having a hard time this morning dealing with um, that anything in this dream was something that I wished so could you just help me with that today yeah it's the, at the bottom of this perceptual world of time and space, linear time and space, is the ego, and it's the death wish. So, not only did it generate all the dreams, but that the dreams, you might say a purification has to happen in the mind, where you get at this buried death wish. When the separation seemed to occur, it was so traumatic for a mind that, that was just naturally peaceful, that that the world was made as a defense mechanism and, and it's almost like they talk about double jeopardy or being twice removed from, from reality that the world was made to cover over the terror of this death wish and to keep it out of awareness. So, in this case, you know, you go along and seem to be Nelda and Nelda's world and, and so forth and then um, this is the kind of thing that you said, I just, I don't have violent sexual experiences, you know, I haven't had a violent sexual experience on the, we'll call it the daytime dreams, but the nighttime dreams are, are also wish fulfillment and it, all it is, is is a way of, again, giving permission and allowing things to surface in the mind and and in one sense, that's because you have such a deep call for God, a deep call for healing, that really that deep sincere call to God is, let everything be uncovered, let everything be exposed. Uh, when you have a dream like that, it's, again, I say it's not so much what happened in the dream, but it's, it's, it's the interpretation that brings the emotion. And again, if it's, seems like something's happening to somebody. You know, that's where that, that personal interpretation is coming in again, and that's where the, the upset occurs. That's where the disturbance is, is really a personal interpretation. Um, some of you might have seen the Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion. Um, it was about Jesus, and when Jesus is literally dragging, carrying the cross, you know, uh, towards Calvary, um, it's amazing the way they shoot the film because his mother's on one side and then there's this ghoulish black character <laughs> walking along and it, they're going along <coughs> side by side. <laughs> Jesus, it's quite an interesting cinematography how they do that. And, you know, we could say that, that it's not so much the memory or the scenes that are ever disturbing is the interpretation of this linear story is where the disturbance comes in. So that's again, that's not a sign that you're doing anything wrong. It's just that your prayer of your heart is is let everything be exposed now. Let nothing be kept hidden, 
And the death wish kind of, you might say, bubbled up <laughs> out of that prayer. And that particular dream was just another call for love, as we talked about earlier. That was, that's just all it is in plain and simple, is a call to, call to love, a call to, to see it with the Holy Spirit. One more thing about that. The uh, gentleman yesterday, uh, I, I think, I can't remember his name, <laughs> that was expressing about his dream. Um, Charles. Charles? Okay. Uh, anyway, um, it was similar as being an observer of something happened, not a participant in it. And uh, but it's a, an, an innocent person being, you know, molested by a, by another person, you know, and it was, it's like, oh, it was just so disturbing. So it, that innocence, did that represent the innocent person in this dream? Would that, I mean, I, I'm not asking you, really, I'm probably asking you for a dream interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I am. But the innocent person in the dream, uh, would that, would you think that would be in my mind our innocence being like molested or by this ego? Or, I mean, what would that, would that be any significance in even a analyzing it or just realizing that it was just a, a fear that would, was coming up? Well, this is good. It's, it takes us deep into this topic of, of innocence. Because in the world, innocence is again seen on the, the screen in the dream, and you're, in this case you're saying an innocent person. And so in a world of opposites, what's the opposite of innocent? Guilty. You see how the ego has taken this true idea, which is in heaven, innocence is just what is. And now it's turned it into a concept, innocent person. And in order to have innocent people, you have to have the opposite, the contrast. You see how clever the ego is? It, it makes up innocence and guilt as if they're in the world. As if there really are guilty people and innocent people. See how sneaky that is? And what we learn from the Course, it, it says, no, you, Jesus is saying, you don't even know what innocence is if you believe it has an opposite. You see, he's, he's saying, you know, we got to go a lot deeper because we have judicial systems, we have everything set up, you know, the guilty must be punished, you know, the innocent must be set free. And whether we play it out in terms of, of slavery and prejudice or, or crimes, um, it's, it's the victims <coughs> that oftentimes get tagged with this word innocent. So we have a phrase in this world, innocent victim. And then we have the perpetrator. <laughs> I somehow, I never hear innocent perpetrator. I, just, I don't hear innocent victim, but not innocent perpetrator. It's the guilty perpetrator and the innocent victim. What a story. What a trick. And so what does Jesus have to say about all of this? He says, Beware of the temptation to perceive yourself unfair. Hmm. The temptation to perceive myself unfairly treated. At one point Jesus says, You have acted for years. You have acted and reacted for years as if you are being crucified. You see, he's taking the crucifixion off of a scene that happened in time, 2,000 years ago, and he's basically saying, listen, wrong-mindedness is crucifixion. Every time you feel that you are unfairly treated, or you perceive anyone, even in a dream, or in the world, as unfairly treated, you are acting as if you are being crucified. You are still believing that crucifixion is real. So what's the way out of that is, if you start to join with the Holy Spirit and see everything as love or a call for love, and it's not their call for love, it's always our own mind's call for love. That's what needs the, 
the awakening experience, the innocence, is the mind needs to experience its own innocence. And that, your question is just showing us, shedding light on this trick of the world, where the split in mind is projected out to the world, and then we see good guys, bad guys, victims, victimizers, you know, innocent victims and guilty perpetrators, and we see terrorists, you know, and I always come back to Gandhi, you know, they asked Gandhi about the devil. They said, tell us, speak to us about the devil, they asked Mahatma Gandhi. And he said, well, if there is a devil, he's running around in our own hearts. You see how he took it off the world? He wasn't, he lived in the time of Hitler. He wouldn't dare call Hitler the devil. He said, if there is a devil, he's running around in our own hearts. You see how beautiful he was pointing to purify your own heart. And, and what Jesus said, you know, take the speck, you know, before you try to get the log or the beam out of your brother's eye, or the speck out of your brother's eye, take the beam or the log out of your own and let thine eye be single. He was just saying, just let yourself be purified and then you'll know the true experience of innocence. So, it's great. Thank you for that question because you see how how we really have to let go of even the concept of innocent persons, you know? That's just another linear concept. One of the things that is being revealed to me as I'm sitting here, joining with everyone, is, you know, I had this, um, uh, this dream um, two nights ago that I explained to the group. And, you know, it's just so interesting is, is the simplicity of asking, you know, asking and not assuming that I know what anything means or anything, but just, you know, understanding that, you know, I ask too little. You know, I don't ask the Holy Spirit enough. And something that was shared here earlier today about being with the Holy Spirit and, and the Holy Spirit being this translator, um, you know, in one of our lessons it talks about um, there's a space that's created and the Holy Spirit and the ego try to, you know, rush in to define what that space is for. And, you know, what, what it dawned on me about this particular dream is that, you know, the ego is still constantly trying to create reality and, and get me to believe what reality is still rushing into the space that's created and whether it's in a waking dream or a sleeping dream a dream is a dream is a dream and um, you know if, if I believe I, the ego's dream like you know in one of our lessons it says I am at home fear is the stranger here if I believe in the ego's dream then then death is the outcome you know violence is the outcome um, you know, but I can always ask the Holy Spirit to show me, you know, everything is retranslated by the Holy Spirit. And I can always ask and not assume I know. You know, my understanding is not a powerful contribution to the truth. You know, I can always ask, you know. And when I ask for reinterpretation and whether it's I'm, you know, I, I share it with the group and and in that, in that sharing, I'm asking, because I don't know. And, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here, and, it's, it's, and, it's, and I almost just kind of smiled inwardly. It's just like, you know, I'm sitting here, and I remember that lesson where, you know, the, the ego is competing with the Holy Spirit in this blank space that's, that's, that's created. And the ego is trying to, to define what it means. And... Um, It's just real cool to just to see that and just let it go, you know, it's, and just be with what the Holy Spirit has already, has already told me what the truth is, you know. Um, and just really be with it. <coughs> just really be with it. And, and that is, it's almost laughable. And, and, and the thing is, is that the two emotions the Course talks about, you know, either love or fear, when I buy into the egos, interpretation, then fear is inevitable. It's, it's, 
you know, I take one bite, like in Star Wars, you know, if you take one step down the dark path, forever will it consume your destiny. You know, if I take one bite of this illusion, then by definition, I'm going to experience the fear, the violence, and, and it may look like it appears in different, different shades, and, but it's, it's, it's all the same, you know? And so I'm really getting in touch with that this morning, and I'm just thinking about, you know, my emotions, and, and you know, I've been in, you know, writing since for a very long time, and I, you know, there came a point where I always write about how I feel lonely, I feel inadequate, I feel lonely, I feel inadequate, I feel this, I feel that. And at some point, you know, I remember saying, you know, and, you know, like, so what, you've been feeling that way for a very long time, what has changed, you know? And my thinking hadn't changed, you know, I, I hadn't been exposed, or I had been exposed to a new way, but I guess when the student is ready, the teacher will appear, you know, I, I, have, I have been exposed to this, this new way, and, 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 and I just hadn't opened my mind to it, and, and, you know, once I started opening my mind to it, it's like my feelings just became like signposts, you know, um, pointing me to, you know, you know, what it is that I must be thinking about myself, or, you know, what I must be, you know, what idea I must be cherishing, or what I believe, and, and the correction was always very simple, you know, I am as God created me, you know, and that pretty much solves everything, I mean, that's just like the, the one remedy, the one cure, the only salvation can be said to cure, you know, I am as God created me is the one thing that just solves everything, you know. And it's just real beautiful because at the back of it all, I am very innocent, you know, just like we all are, you know, and, and the one mind is, you know, the Christ is very innocent. And um, most of, if not all, of everything I experience seems to, seems to have guilt at the back of it, you know. And, um, and so I'm just really feeling that right now. And I'm really enjoying being in this moment. And it's kind of like, you know, looking out and I'm, I'm looking at the mountains and, you know, and recognizing that it's all a projection, you know. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just good. It's just real good right now. And I'm glad to be here in the safety of this group. And, you know, and also remembering that, you know, the safety is just, again, a reflection of what's inside. You know, once I leave here, it's not like the, the, the safety's gone. You know, it's like it's, it's a reflection of the one mind and the innocence and the safety that's within me. This is a reflection of what's always with all of us, all the time. And, you know, it never changes. It's always constant. And um, it's just a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. I just want to share that with you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you.